Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here with one of my favorite videos that I do on my channel, and that is a book haul revisit. I really love doing these because I just think it's fun to kind of hold myself accountable and be like, okay, you bought these books, did you read these books? <laughs> it's just fun to do. So, yes. So we are going to be looking back at a video, a book haul that I did in November 2019, and see what books I read, what books I haven't, and from the unread pile, if there are any, uh, then I will pick one and read it next month and put on my TBR. If, and this has happened before, if I have read them all, then I have kind of, on my TBR shelves, I have kept the books from former book haul revisits together on my bookshelf, and I will pick one from one of those old haul revisits, if that makes any sense. So, Okay, let's just uh, dive right in and see what I bought in November 2019. Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you a book haul. Um, it's been a little bit um, since I did a book haul, and I have accumulated some books here, so I'm going to go ahead and dive right in and share with you what I have purchased recently. Okay, so first up, I um, took a little trip to Second and Charles. Um, I don't go there all too often. But it, I, it seems like every time I do, I end up picking up something. Um, and this time I picked up American Vampire Volume 2. Um, this is by Scott Snyder, Raphael Albuquerque, and Mateus Santaluco. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. So yeah, this is um, a, vam a vampire-esque series that deals with like American history with a vampire story and every I believe every volume is like a different decade so volume one was mostly the 1920s so I believe this one is going to be the 1930s okay so I did read American Vampire volume two uh, because I actually just read last month I just read volume four so I'm a few volumes ahead of that so I don't remember what I gave volume two I want to say I gave it three or four stars so it was enjoyable obviously because I've continued with the series so yeah that's one for the red pile so all of the rest of the books I believe yes all of the rest of the books I picked up at library sales um there was a big one that I went to um during spookathon I believe that was so that was like mid-october and then the rest have just kind of picked up here and there and um, when I go to my local library I always check the little the little book sale area so yeah um, all of these I got for a really good price <laughs> um, the first one is one that is like dear to my childhood and one that I hope to read with Leia because I think she'd really get a kick out of it and it's um, Sideways Stories from Wayside School by Louis Sechar Set um, I read this when I was a kid and I thought it was really funny um, it's about a school that was built, was it backwards, where there's like, oh, I don't even remember how many floors there are, but it's really, really tall, but there's only one classroom on each floor. Okay, so I'm not going to count this one um, towards like the revisit, I guess, because it is one that I've actually already read, but I did buy it because I want to read it with Leia. So eventually we will do that, but yeah, that was a very fun book from my childhood, so I'm glad that I found a copy. Next I picked up The Awakening by Kate Chopin? Chopin? I want to say it's Chopin, right? I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this is a classic that I've never read, and I don't know why, because it sounds like something I would enjoy. Um, it's about a woman who is vacationing on the coast, I believe the Gulf Coast, with her children, um, and she kind of, I believe she starts to have some sort of, like, affair with somebody. I'm just gonna stop there because I read The Awakening, was it 2020, early 2020, and I hated it. I hated it so much. Hated it. Uh, I could not stand the main character. I just, the whole story was just, I just hated it. <laughs> I honestly, looking back, I don't even know why I would have thought I would have enjoyed a story like that because it's, BS, it's basically yeah, about a woman who um, has an affair uh, and this affair, like, causes her to have this, you know, awakening of, like, who she is and blah, blah, blah. And ugh, it was just, it was so bad. I, I, I gave it one star. I did not enjoy it at all. And that book is gone. I got rid of that book as soon as I could because I did not want it anywhere near my bookshelf. So that's another one for the red pile, even though I hated it. Kind of staying in the classics realm, sort of. I also picked up um, The Wasteland and Other Poems by T.S. Eliot. Um, there's something that I want to try in 2020, 
is I want to try to read more poetry because I haven't read any in so long and I actually I also have um, leaves of grass sitting on my shelves and it's I I want to start reading more poetry so when I saw this at the sale I figured why not <laughs> okay so uh, there I am two years ago saying I want to read more poetry and have I not really <laughs> I've read one poetry collection this year and I DNF to Leaves of Grass, so. But I have not read The Wastelands. Um, so yeah, it's still on my shelf. So there is finally one in the unread pile because I definitely still want to read it because, as you all know, I still want to read more poetry. Next up, I picked up American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. Um, I feel like everybody kind of knows this story because of the movie, but it's about a guy named Patrick, Patrick Bateman who is, um, he's very rich and smart and attractive and just very clean cut. He works on Wall Street. He's kind of like living the dream. But then on the side, he kills people. <laughs> so I have not read American Psycho, but I definitely still want to check it out because I thought the movie was pretty awesome. So I've always wanted to read the book to kind of compare the two, um, maybe do a flicks and lit on it someday. So I mean, I've read a lot of disturbing, not a lot, I've read a few disturbing books this year. Um, and I'm sure that American Psycho is right up there with like, really disturbing stuff. So I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, it's unread. So there we go. That's now um, two read and two unread. Then I picked up a um, booktube darling for sure. Um, and that is A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. This is about an old man named Uva who is um, kind of notoriously known for just being very crotchety and grumpy. And he gets these new neighbors that come in. Um, they're a young couple and they have two young kids and they kind of turn his world upside down. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I have read A Man Called Uva. I read it... Was it last year? I don't even remember, but uh, it ended up being a three-star read. Um, I thought it was good and it was kind of heartwarming and all of that stuff, but I also, I don't know why, I also felt sort of disconnected from it. Um, yeah, so it was it was a three-star read. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I definitely um, enjoyed Bear Town by Frederick Bachman a lot more than this one, but it was good. I liked it, so there we go. I read it. There's one for the red pile. So going from like a nice heartfelt, warm sort of story, we're gonna now go to the dark side <laughs> because I picked up We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. This is another one where I have seen the movie and I thought the movie was really good. Figured I would check out the book as well. Um, it's about a woman whose son, teenage son, um, basically is the perpetrator or the, what's the word? He basically goes into his school and he kills a number of his classmates and some of the staff and is arrested and is imprisoned. Um, and the book kind of takes place, picks up two years after this horrible act of violence that her son has committed. And she is coming to terms, still coming to terms, obviously, with what happened and is asking herself whether it was that Kevin did this horrible thing because he was just innately evil? Or was it because of the way she mothered him? Um, I DNF'd we need to talk about Kevin because, and it's weird because like listening to the synopsis again, I'm like, gosh, it sounds so fascinating. But reading the book, I was gonna buddy read this with Bobby over at Bobby Reads and both of us ended up DNFing it because we couldn't stand the main character. She was very, very snobby and the writing was just very very snobby and so it was really hard to I felt like to sympathize with this character and connect with this character even though like you should feel bad for her because obviously like her son did a terrible thing and all that and she obviously is also um a lot of blame and stuff is put on her for what he did but I just I didn't I didn't care I didn't make it very far. I want to say I made it like 40 or 50 pages in and I was like, I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> so yeah, did not read. We need to talk about Kevin. It was a DNF. Was not for me. Next up, I picked up The Weight of Silence by Heather Gudenkoff. And this is one of those books that I've seen. I always see the cover. I always see it at bookstores and things like that. And I always pick it up and read the back and go, oh, okay, maybe, maybe not today. But I saw it at the book sale and I thought, 
I'm gonna pick it up this time. Um, it is about two little girls who are good friends. Um, they're seven years old and one day they go missing and it kind of deals with their families and how they are dealing with this, the disappearance of these girls. And one of the little girls has um, select mutism um, that has been brought on from some sort of trauma that she suffered as a toddler. And so I feel like it's going to be um, part mystery and also part family drama. Okay, so I have not read The Weight of Silence, but it still sounds very intriguing to me. <laughs> so I definitely still want to read it. So I'm going to add it here. Um, yeah, so now we have three read, three unread, and, a, and an unhaul or DNF. So, all right, we're, we're neck and neck here. So next I am finishing off my collection of Kate Morton books. I think this is the last one that I didn't have of hers. Um, and that one is The Distant Hours. So I now have The Lake House, The Forgotten Garden, The House at Riverton, and now this. And I think that's all of them. Correct me if I have missed any. But I haven't read those three. And I obviously haven't read this one. Um, this one deals with a woman who her mother receives this letter that is like 50 years old. And it leads her to this castle in, I believe, England, where these two um, spinster sisters live. They're twins, and then they are taking care of their younger sister. Um, and she kind of goes there and finds out that her mother actually lived there for a time during World War II. And some secrets get uncovered, because there's a mystery, of course. Um, typical Kate Morton kind of story where you're dealing with a story going on in the present, and then there's something happening in the past, and the two are tied together. Okay, so I have not read The Distant Hours either. <laughs> but again, I really enjoy Kate Morton's books. Um, I've read quite a few more since this haul. Um, in fact, I think the only two I have left, I have this one, and then I still have The Forgotten Garden that I haven't read. So, so yeah, obviously I still want to read this one. Um, yeah, so it's going in the unread pile. So now officially there are more unread than read, which doesn't happen very often on these guys. So let's see how it turns out. So this next one um, is one that I've heard of here and there. And I picked it up and I decided to pick it up and buy it because of a line at the back. But first let me tell you what it is. That book is How to Build a Girl by Caitlin Moran and this is about a young girl named Johanna who and it takes place in 1990 which off the bat already has me feeling nostalgic um, I of course wasn't a teenager in 1990 but I was a teen throughout the late 90s so yeah um, and it's about Johanna who is 16 and she, she suffers some sort of public humiliation and decides to reinvent herself entirely and even to the point of like changing her name um, to Dolly Wilde and she starts to um, drink and smoke and have lots of sex and she's writing um, she wants to be a writer she kind of um, really like models herself after Joe from Little Women but then she kind of starts to realize that um, this new persona maybe isn't necessarily her deep down and so it's definitely like a book I believe about like self-discovery and um, coming of age and that sort of thing but what got me what got me is on the back it says imagine the bell jar written by Rizzo from Greece <laughs> Okay, so that does really sound intriguing because you guys know I love a coming-of-age story. And yeah, the setting, the 1990s setting and all of that, um, that sounds really intriguing still. So yeah, I definitely still want to read How to Build a Girl. haven't read it yet, but definitely want to. So that is going on the unread pile. So yeah, the unread pile is, is getting bigger, guys. All right, so I have two more books to talk about. Um, the first one is The River at Night by Erica Varenchik. And this one deals with a woman who goes on a girls weekend trip with a couple of her girlfriends um, and they're doing like a hike and um, what do you call it? Hiking, hiking and like rafting. There we go. 
and then something happens or some sort of freak accident and they're stranded and they don't have any of their supplies and then they stumble upon this camp as they're trying to like find help and this camp turns out isn't um isn't so great either it's, there's some sinister stuff going on and then all this other stuff starts to happen I don't know so it sounds like a survival story but like a thrillery sort of survival story okay so I did read the river at night and I think I gave it three stars I remember enjoying it it was kind of a wild ride because it's definitely like a survival story um, so yeah um, if that's something that any of you are into, I would, I would definitely recommend this one because it was, it was a ride. It was a ride. <laughs> it was good. Um, so yeah, I think I gave it three stars. It was good. I liked it. So there we go. There's another one on the red pile. And then the last book I, I purchased at a library sale, I was on the fence about because I'm on the fence about this author in general. She seems to be very polarizing. People either like, like her books or they don't, or there's been a couple books that they're, that people like, oh, that book was great. But then other people say that book was crap. I don't know. I don't know what's, I don't know. But I want to give her a try just because I want to give her a try. So I picked up In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. I know some of you are probably screaming at me right now like don't read it. Um, because I've, I've heard bad things about this. But I've also heard a few people say it was good. So... I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. It's about a woman who goes um, to visit an old friend um, from her past who she hasn't seen in a while, but they invite her to this like weekend away um, in this like very, I believe it's a very secluded house. And right away, you know, with not being there very long, she figures out, okay, this is like, this is, this is giving me weird vibes and I want to get out of here. But then, you know, she ends up being trapped. She can't get out for whatever reason. So then all this stuff from her past starts to kind of come back to haunt her. I'm going to stop there. I did read In a Dark, Dark Wood. It was, and it's the um, only Ruth Ware I've read so far. And I think I, I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars, I believe. I think I remember being a little underwhelmed by like the twist at the end, the kind of like why are they there and you know that whole thing was kind of predictable in a sense. I guessed it pretty early on but I think overall like the the ride was fun and the especially like the whole climax was I, if, if I remember right it was pretty action-packed and you know turn you know page turning so I enjoyed myself but it definitely wasn't like the best thriller I've ever read and I don't and it, and it didn't turn me off from Ruth Ware. I think I would read another Ruth Ware in the future, but um, I'd have to just be real careful about which one I pick because, again, like I said here, I know there's some of her books that people are like, don't bother, they're, they're just garbage. So I'd have to be really careful about which one I picked, but I would probably give her another shot for sure. All right, so it looks like the final tally was five read, five unread, and one unhauled. So I think that's pretty good. I mean, it was right down the middle, which is which is great. So I'm going to go grab the five books that I haven't read and pick which one I'm going to put on my December TBR. Okay, so I'm back and I grabbed the books that I haven't read yet. And I think right off the bat, I'm going to eliminate from the TBR um, The Distant Hours because I find that I really like to read Kate Morton in the spring or summer. It's just one of those vibes that she gives me. And so I want to read this in the spring or summer. So I'm going to take it off. It's not a December type book for me, okay? Um, okay. Let's see. I think I'm also right now um, going to eliminate, for now, American Psycho. Just because I right now I'm reading um, in October and even here in November, I'm reading a lot of like darker, for the most part, like darker supernatural kind of stuff. A lot of like mysteries and things. And so... Um, I I want something a little more lighthearted, I think, going into the end of the year. And this definitely is not lighthearted. <laughs> so I'm going to save this for another time uh, because I just don't feel like getting messed up right now emotionally. So that leaves The Weight of Silence, The Wasteland and Other Poems, and How to Build a Girl. So, okay, I think also... The Weight of Silence is also seems like it's kind of a darker, a darker, more sad sort of story. 
So I think I'm going to pass on this one too. So it's like, okay, do I want to do coming of age? Maybe a little dark, but also kind of funny. Or do I want to do some poetry <laughs> and go easy on myself in December? Uh, because I can tell you right now that November um, has been, I, I really overdid it with the TBR in November. So December, I kind of want to reel it in a little bit and not read as much, or at least not put as much on myself in terms of my reading plans. So I'm kind of like, okay, do I want to read The Wasteland and go easy on myself, or do I want to read this? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Speak to me, books. Tell me what to do. Okay. Oh god, I don't know. Okay, I decided I'm gonna go easy on myself and read The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot because I, like I said, I have been wanting to read more poetry and now here's an opportunity, so I need to do it, right? I need, I need to read this. And it's, it's actually, there is not a whole lot of actual poetry in this now that I'm like flipping through it because there's a huge introduction and then at the end, there's a bunch of notes. Like, this is all notes. So I, I feel like this, like, like, the poems are just this. <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to go easy on myself and read The Wasteland and other poems. So, it was really hard to decide, though, because I, I, I still did really want to read How to Build a Girl. So, who knows, maybe... If December, if I get to a point in December where I'm looking for something else to read, maybe I'll pick that one up too, but I'm not going to commit. I'm not going to commit to it. So, okay. So let me know down below if any of you guys have read any T.S. Eliot. What am I getting myself into? Let me know. And then, of course, if you've read any of these books that I haven't read, let me know which ones I'm missing out on and I need to read as soon as possible because I always love to hear that. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this little walk down memory lane. And yeah, um, that's it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. And yeah, I'll talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.